Hi there, I trust that you are well. Today, my pal Broccoli and I, we will be looking at Psalm 8. And Psalm 8, this psalm is a solemn meditation on and admiration of the greatness of God, the greatness and the glory of God. And it begins and ends with the same acknowledgement of the transcendent excellency of God's name. I don't know if you are, but I'm excited to dig deeper into this psalm. We have some stories prepared to share with you and also... Now, let's just listen to the audio version of Psalm 8. And we thought, because Broccoli and I recently went on an amazing adventure, we spent a few weeks back home in Poland, so there is still some footage that we maybe not posted on social media and stuff, so we can share with you as we are listening to the audio version of Psalm 8. Broccoli, are you ready? Let's go! Psalm 8 Lord, our Lord, How majestic is your name in all the earth! You have set your glory in the heavens. Through the praise of children and infants you have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is mankind? that you are mindful of them, human beings, that you care for them. You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor. You made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet, all flocks and herds and the animals of the wild, the birds in the sky and the fish in the sea, all that swim the paths of the seas. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. And this is the word of the Lord and thanks be to God. So as we said earlier, this psalm is a solemn meditation on and admiration of the glory and greatness of God. And the verse that stood out to me naturally is verse 1 and also verse 9, which are the same. And it says, Lord, Our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. I have a question to you. The question is, where do you see the greatness of God? Where do you see the greatness of God? When I thought about that this morning, then immediately this passage came to me from Jeremiah, which says, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. This is what the Lord says. If you can break my covenant with the day and my covenant with the night, so that day and night no longer come at their appointed time, and then God continues. So when I thought, where do I see the greatness of God? First, I thought creation. I just, I have a lovely view outside of my window. I can see those beautiful hills of the Scottish borders. I can see the sheep and the cattle and the beef animals just walking on the hills waiting, just exercising, stretching, eating, feeding themselves up to one day end up on my plate and be a beautiful rump steak. Anyway, when I thought of the greatness of God, I thought about the creation, the hills, the animals, but also the covenant that God has with David and the covenants that he made throughout history with various people. And this very challenging statement of God, this very those very challenging words when God said, If you can break my covenant with the day and my covenant with the night, so that the day and night no longer come at their appointed time. I thought, how powerful is that? Like no human being could can ever imagine even creating, coming up with some innovation, some solution, some machine, some idea on how to stop the day to come after night and night after day. So this very passage. And this very statement, those words, they speak to me of the greatness of God. Where do you see the greatness of God? Now, there is also an encouragement, Broccoli and I, we see in this passage. And I wonder, and I wonder, because life is tough. Life is hard. I was saying that to my friends yesterday. We had a lovely morning at church, two services back to back, an amazing atmosphere. We just felt like we were being led by the Holy Spirit, just really feeling like we are in sync with what God is doing among us. It was such an amazing feeling. We were all stirred up, built up and uplifted 
to go home and live the life that Jesus wants us to live. But then in the afternoon, in the evening, I felt a bit tired. And I said to my friends how easy it was this morning to worship God and live the life. But it is quite challenging now to do it and um, when no one's watching, when no one's watching and maybe when I'm not feeling 100%. So I wonder if maybe today you feel like all hell is breaking loose. Maybe you feel crushed. Maybe you feel like you're following Jesus. You are bearing fruit for God. But yet still you are being crushed. You are bearing the fruit. You're connected to the vine. You're the branch. You bear fruit. But yet still you're being crushed. And maybe you're thinking, what's the way forward? And now I'm asking that question. What is the way forward? Especially if you're bearing fruit for God. And I don't know if you know that God is a winemaker. It's not only God's desire and design for us to be connected to the vine, without whom we can't do anything and bear fruit, but also he's a winemaker. And once we bear fruit, the fruit is being crushed and begins its kind of transformation to become wine. So I want you to know that, that if, you are, if you've been doing everything you could to follow Jesus and do the right thing according to the instruction you have from God, maybe you're crushing is the sign that you are in the right place. So what's the way forward for you? What's the way forward for us? The first thought that came to me was a movie, a movie that my beautiful girlfriend Lauren introduced me to the other week. And the movie is called Where Hands Touch, Where Hands Touch. And Where Hands Touch is a beautiful story of a German girl that happened to be a black girl in Germany, in Nazi Germany in that time where the World War I and II was raging and there was a rise of Nazi and the Jewish people were slowly being persecuted and this German girl, she, she was born there, she was kind of watching and observing how the Jewish people were slowly kind of persecuted more and more and more and more, their properties were being taken, they were being kicked out of the society, their jobs, their businesses and then slowly they were being taken to the concentration camps and and she was watching all that and she would never have dreamt or imagined that that would happen to her but that that's exactly what was about to happen slowly she was losing her liberties and she was being treated as a second class citizen and then slowly step by step she was sent to the concentration camp with the jewish people um which was a really sad story but in the midst of that there was also an element of love because it was a young girl, she fell in love with a soldier, a young German soldier, he fell in love with her as well. And before the moment when she was taken to the concentration camp, um, she became pregnant, but he didn't know that. So she was taken to the concentration camp, he didn't know, he was deployed, he was taken to some parts of Poland, I would Im imagine, or Russia, I think, at that time to fight in the war. His father was also in the military. So they kind of departed. He didn't know that she was pregnant. She had no way to tell him. So she was in the concentration camp. And as you can imagine, most of you are familiar. The conditions were pretty rough there, pretty ter terrible. They had to work hard. There wasn't much food for them. The sanitary conditions were just awful. And I know that because many of those camps were based in Poland and um, and I visited a few of them so um so i've seen it firsthand what it's like what it was like and in the movie they kept it true to the story so she went through those horrible moments there in the concentration camp being pregnant hiding her pregnancy and just fighting for her life struggling and fighting for her life and the soldier this young soldier that, that was truly in love with her but trapped in this very difficult situation he was deployed and he was stationed at the very camp where she was. And one day he was walking through the camp and he noticed her and he was like, whoa, that's her, that's my girl. And he wanted to help her out. But obviously, if the connection was being discovered by other soldiers, he would be shot immediately. So would be she. So he tried to hide that for a while, help her a bit with the food and stuff. She didn't really want his help much. She was really just just hurt by what happened 
not only between them but also just just during this time in the con concentration camp people people changed they had to survive so um so it was a rough time for her anyway near the end of the story where they came the liberation from the russians and the american on that camp then this girl was about to be freed and the soldier and all the German soldiers, they were burning the documents, they were destroying all the evidence uh, before the German and the, Ameri the Russians and the Americans come. And in the midst of that, his father, this young soldier's father, he was also there. And he found out that she was that girl that he was going out with, with that she was pregnant. And when all the soldiers were fleeing, he wanted to take her with them. But the father knew that if he did so, that he would be shot, this girl would be shot, and the baby will die. So the father did him a kind of mercy. It was a beautiful scene when he just tried to, to take her with them. He tried to just express his love through that. And the father just stood behind him and shot him in the head as an act of kindness, act of love. Because he knew that if the girl died with the baby and the son came back home, that he would die inside, that he would have no life back home. So he thought that the best he can do for him is to take his life in order to save the life, life of his child and this lady. So this lady was liberated. She went to the, to the, um, I would say, yeah, this kind of camp-like place where, where all the people could find refuge, where they could find um, food. And there is a beautiful scene. That's, that's all the build up to this beautiful scene that I saw in the movie. And the scene was this, after all those awful events that happened to this girl and to hundreds and thousands and millions of others, she wasn't the only one. There was many people that also suffered all that. And in the midst of that, in the midst of that, all those tragedies, all those millions of life lost, this betrayal, hunger, persecution, all that stuff, the very next day, after they were liberated. It's a beautiful scene where, where they were being looked after. Now their medical needs were being covered. They were being fed. And the girls had their hair nicely done. They were all washed and dressed. And, and the, the kids are just running around looking for their mothers and fathers to just help them out with, with um, little things. And it's just a scene of life. That's what I'm trying to say, that, that the best they could do is to get on with their lives. The life just went on. Day before there was war, there was concentration camps, there was tragedy, death. And the very next day, it was a scene full of life, full of hope. And of course, the people were traumatized, I would imagine. But the best they could do was to move on. And I wonder if it's not an encouragement for us as well from the movie where Hans touch that maybe we are experiencing, maybe not as ex extreme tragedies, or maybe some of us do, as those concentration camps, racial persecution and war. But if we are finding ourselves in that place today, maybe the best we can do tomorrow, the best we can do next second, minute, hour, day, is to move on, is to move on not to forget, but to move on in a way that I would like to present now. And the way is, maybe we can move on by acknowledging God's greatness and coming to God with thankfulness. What I mean by that, that this psalm is a solemn reminder that God is great. Day and night, day comes after night all the time. And if you find yourself in the night, then know that the day is coming. But it's up to you if you will just keep holding on until the day comes. And the best way that I found in the time when I'm not feeling 100%, when I feel crushed, when I feel like all hell is breaking lo loose, when I feel like I'm doing all the right thing, bearing fruit for God, and yet I'm being crushed. In those moments, two things take me through this time as I'm waiting for the night to pass. Stop. Sorry, that was my Google Home. For the night to pass and the day to come. And the thing number one is 
exactly acknowledging God's greatness and second acknowledging God's goodness through thankfulness and I don't know if you know I shared that with our church yesterday that the word grace and the word thankfulness are connected in English we say grace but in other languages those two words are just closely knit and connected for example Italian grazie Spanish gracias that indicates to us that these two are connected why is that important because in order to go through trials to go through hard time through persecution through moments of being crushed we need God's grace would you agree that we need that we need God's grace and the moment we stop being thankful to God is the moment we step out of the grace of God because Paul was writing about that quite often and when he was saying to the churches to be thankful on one occasion and on other he was saying to have a grace I don't have time to do the Bible study and dig deeper into that but that's quite fascinating to me that the word thank you is connected with the word grace and if we want to be in the grace of God we need to be thankful the moment we stop being thankful is the moment we we are out of the grace of God so to summarize that all together the psalm is the psalm that speaks to us about the greatness and the glory of God and sometimes in our lives we we feel like we are being crushed and the best we can do according to me and my pal Broccoli the best encouragement and way forward we found so far is in the time of the night to take the time to verbally acknowledge God's greatness and tell him God you're good you're great your covenant with day and night is unbreakable unchangeable you're greater the hills are so beautiful you're great God the hills are so great the mountain tops are so high you're great God the animals on the field are so beautifully and wonderfully made just like I am God you're great and thankfulness God thank you that I'm going to sleep and wake up because you sustain me God thank you that there is breath in my lungs God thank you that I went through the fire but I don't smell like smoke so friends that's my encouragement to you and the question is where do you see the greatness of God where do you see the greatness of God please share with us Where do you see the greatness of God? Maybe in the comments section or maybe you can message me or call me privately because most of you are my friends. Probably only my mom is watching this video. Anyway, love you, mom. Love you, mom. Anyway, have a blessed day. And um, honestly, if you are feeling like you are going through the night, know that the day is coming. And the best you can do is to acknowledge God's greatness and God's goodness through thankfulness. Now, Broccoli, thank you for being with me as well, Tal, and, um, and I'll see you on the next video. God bless. Bye.